They're like, ah, oh, well, the market's going down. I want to see when the bottom is. Well, no one never knows where the yeah. bottom is. You're you gonna never miss know. It. And so then the frustration is, as a real estate agent, you want to like shake them like, guys, like, are, are you gonna buy or not? If, if someone wrote you a handwritten card, let's just say for your birthday, you probably keep that for even a week, two weeks, a month on your desk. So imagine if you wrote a handwritten card and mailed it to somebody, they probably would keep it. Yeah. How many people get a handwritten card? It will think of five guys, like what a simple concept. It's literally burgers and fries. That's it. And they, they just added I think they have chicken. a hot dog. Kobe Sway here with Adam Briley. Another edition this week, like always. Um, we're talking about prospecting today. Yep. Which we've been talking about for a little while. As the market continues to change and churn, we want our agents to get more aggressive, to get out there. And sometimes it takes more work for the same or less amount of pay. So that's what kind of throws people off is you have to do more work than you did the year before if you're going to expect the same result. Yep. Well, I mean, what's going on right now is just to talk about the market as most agents are going through is we have a slowing market. We have an election year. You have inflation. You have a lot of um, uncertainty. So just people are not moving like they once were, right? Even, you know, the Fed's meeting here in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Talks about lowering the rates, um, what, probably a quarter percent, but that doesn't necessarily mean home mortgage rates are going to go down. Nope. And a lot of people, a lot of loan officers are saying, hey, these are, they've already been reflected. They've already been, yeah. so don't be surprised if they don't go down. It, it helps like small businesses because yep. that money's cheaper. But then again, uh, and what it can do is it helps potentially have people take their money out of the bank that they're getting a higher rate and then put it back into maybe stocks or real estate. So that sure. can help spike it. it. Could. Um, but I think we're all, I guess the way I'm operating is like, it is probably just going to be slower through the end of the year and going yeah. into next year for sure. So I think the biggest shift that we had and mainly due to our, we had a really good conversation with John Shetblack, our real estate coach or our business coach last week was really focusing on how many two minute or more conversations yep. are you having with prospective people? And this isn't like following up with your, your leads, like, or your, um, existing clients, existing clients that you're out showing that's, that's just called follow up. And again, I'm always surprised whether it's an agent on our team or another agent at a different brokerage at our brokerage in a different market where they can't honestly say how they've committed to over 30 minutes a day of yeah. prospecting and we're paid to prospect. Yeah. That's how you build your pipeline. Yeah. And, and so I think you're dealing with rejections, always a thing that everyone deals with. They struggle with it, especially if you are a new agent or you, maybe you're a vet agent, you haven't had to prospect in a while. And, and you now, start to second guess yourself. Well, and then you start prospecting, you start getting rejected, you start getting down on yourself. Yeah. Right. And then it, it, it sidetracks you yep. on continuously going forward with that. And you're already down. You're already down because yeah. you're not doing well or your business is slowing. Yeah. And it's just this horrible, vicious cycle that it just creates this bad momentum. And um, so again, we're shifting to, so what John said last week, which I thought was really interesting is the teams that are, and they're real. And then the other thing too, is the tracking of it yep, yep. is, so we use follow-up boss. So whatever CRM you're using, can you go in and look at what you did the previous week? How many phone conversations did you have? How many text messages you send out? How many emails did you send out? Um, and so the teams that are seeing success is they're having on average 50 two minute or more conversations per week per agent. Yep. So it's about 10 a day, right? Five days a week. So that doesn't mean you called 10 people. Yep. That means you actually talked to 10 people and had a two minute conversation or more. And it's not just like, um, a real estate conversation. Yeah. It's really important to make sure that you are deep diving them. Yes. And that's why having follow-up boss or a nice CRM is effective because now you can take notes on how your conversation went with them a yep. month ago. Or Well, and a lot of the calls are recorded in follow-up boss and transcribed automatically. Yeah. So you can go in and just listen and it's just checking in on soccer practice or maybe, you know, their kids or their wives or their husbands or, you know, mom and dad or grandpa, grandma, like it's motivation 
decision makers, and these are going to be longer nurture conversations. Yep. Because the average real estate transaction is taking a little bit longer because people are like, well, how, how low are rates going to go? So like, why wouldn't, why would I buy now? Why wouldn't I just see if the rates go down just a little bit more? Why would I buy right now if I could just wait to see what happens with this political thing, right? Like the election, but it, so that's, that's a real thing. So it's gotta be the real estate agent checking in with them and talking about, you know, sometimes it's real estate news. Sometimes it's family news. Sometimes it's events. Maybe it's talking about the Huskers that just won, right? Like it's just staying relevant, top of mind to your client. Yep. At, on, on that too, I think is interesting is I know I have a lot of clients too that are like, you know, you can never win. You never feel like you're going to win because if the market's starting to go up, uh, I don't want to buy. The market's too hot. It's too good. I don't want to compete. Yeah. I'm going to wait till it goes down. Okay. <laughs> market's going down. I mean, in my opinion, now is the most opportune time to be buying a house. I agree. To get the best price negotiated, pull them down on price. Like there's a lot far. less clients out there. This is the first time in a really long time that there's more active listings than pending sales. Yes. In our market. So it could be shifting towards a buyer's market. Oh, yeah. I definitely think it. And so now you think like, okay, it's it's like it's now is the time to buy. But then those same types of folks are like, and I have friends that are this way. They're like, oh, well, the market's going down. I want to see when the bottom is. Well, no one never knows where the yeah, bottom is. You're you gonna never know. And so then the frustration is, as a real estate agent, you want to like shake them, like, guys, like, are, are you gonna buy or not? Like, do you <laughs> want to buy or not? Like, but but then it goes back to because you got to buy low and then sell high, which is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> and it, so it's if it's going up, oh, I don't want to buy. I don't want to compete. Well, it's going down now. That's the time you want to buy, right? Oh, what's going down? When when's the bottom gonna be? Like how long is this gonna last? Sort of thing. And it's like, well, you don't really know. No. But that's why it always goes back to you gotta focus on the folks that have real life changing events. Yes. Divorce, their last kid went off to school. Uh, maybe they had another kid, so now they need a bigger house, just got married, like those relocation. Things. Yeah, it's a family event. Which is a normal real estate Absolutely. selling market. Yes. Of but course. I know agents are stressed because they're like Things aren't moving like they once were. I don't even have any showings on my listings or I can't get a buyer to go out and look. I had an open house this weekend. No one stopped by. It's like, well, did you promote it? Did you door knock it? Did you do any social? Well, no, I just kind of waited. Yeah. Right. And it's like, I, I guess like we get paid to get rejected. Yes. And so I think the more we can like put in our head, like, embrace the suck embrace the rejection like you get paid to re get rejected like yes but guess what it's an opportunity for you to go make five thousand six to ten thousand whatever your commission sure. is on a transaction now you got to work for it yeah, yeah yeah but you have had a lot of rejections leading up to that transaction kind of like at bats in baseball right you go up to bat you strike out a lot you yeah. just have to hit the ball every once in a while and you'll be highly successful it's the same thing in real estate we just need more at bats yeah and so how it's, you know, I was talking to two agents on our team this morning and, you know, we're talking about activity versus skill, uh -huh, uh -huh. right? Well, cause usually there's a skill or will thing, right? Like, do they have the skill to do it or do they have the will to do it? So yeah. like, usually it's like, oh, I'm not motivated. I don't have the will. Yeah. A lot of people are like, well, if I just were trained a little bit more. Yeah. And it's, it's in my opinion, it's never more training. Yeah. It's always like, what is the activity you're doing yeah. to go out and do it? And that's where we have to make sure we're spending our time on that. Because if you go out and do the activity, yeah, you might be a little bumpy along the way, but you're building your skill while you're doing that. Yep. And that is like that, that's really going to be, I think a big fundamental shift for us on our team is like for Janelle, for example, we're going to try to shorten her conversation she's having with the agents on the team from an hour down to like 15 to 20 minutes. And we're going to have like three to five questions that she's going to ask them on, you know, little personal, but also like, what did your calendar look like? What did you commit to? What are the things that you did this past week? What are you committing to this week? What midweek, what did you commit to? Yep. What are you doing? What have you done? How far behind are you? Are you ahead, et cetera? on the activity that you said you're going to do because generally continuously doing that activity you will see success exactly it might take 
60 days, 90 days, six months. But if you continue to push through that, you will win. Totally. It's just getting, you know, us from five, two minute conversations a week. I, I like John's approach. Like, hey, don't just go to him and say, hey, you need to have start having 52 yeah. minute conversations Second, yeah. a week. Like, stair step it. First, the goal's 10. Yeah. A week. Yeah. Start with two conversations a day. Yeah. Well, and one thing that's been different, Adam, is like, you know, it doesn't matter if it's Fall Boss or Sierra, or, you know, Boomtown. It doesn't matter the CRM, but we would always keep track of calls, texts, and emails. So, like, a lot of real estate agents will call from their phone and then they'll go into Fall Boss and they'll mark called, right? And we don't know how long the call was. We don't know if it's two seconds. We don't know if it's two hours. It's just called, right? Yep. So that is a fundamental shift is we want you to call out a follow boss because if you're not calling out a follow boss, we won't know how long the conversation is had. Yep. We just, there's no way to track it, right? And you won't know yourself. And that's the other thing that's a struggle is a lot of realtors are like, well, it's just simpler on my phone. It's not simpler on your phone. It's just how long have you had your cell phone? Let's say they've had it for 15 years, 20 years. Okay, well, what do you do today to make calls? Well, I go to my phone book and I hit a call button. That's what you're trained to do. That's what your body's been doing, right? Like that's the activity you've been doing. So now what the activity is, it's so simple on follow boss. You hit a section that says today's call and then you call those people Mm -hmm. and then it automatically dials them. It automatically records it. It automatically transcribes it and it automatically will set the next task slash to do. It's just intimidating when you first start doing it initially. Yes. Like most people get overwhelmed and they're like, Exactly. Well, and a lot of agents say, what do I say too? Like, I just called him two weeks ago. I just called him a month ago. Like, and that is an ongoing thing is like, you know, it, it can be about anything that's going on right now. It could be a- Asking for referrals. Yeah. I know that you're not really in the market right now today. I know you said you wanted to kick it till next summer, but anybody else, like you're having a baby right now. Who else in your friend group right now can you introduce me to? And I think you said it the other day or a couple of weeks ago. Who can you introduce me to that will introduce me to the person? Yeah. Right? Going a layer deeper so they don't feel pressured to bring you somebody. That's actually going to be buying or selling. Exactly. Someone that can maybe just help them get introduced to someone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, well, why would I ask for something when I haven't gotten anything yet? And you have been providing service. You maybe have set them up with a mortgage lender. You might have gotten them certain percentages or rates. Maybe you helped them on an open house. Maybe you showed them some houses. Maybe you provide certain materials. So you have done something. You haven't just called them and said, hey, do you want to buy a house today? Yep. Right? Like we've done some education. So that's going to be a fundamental shift for our team. Instead of just hitting the call button or message button, it's what was the conversation? How long was the conversation? And we want to see the conversation had in the CRM. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a fundamental shift for our team because we haven't done that ever. Yeah. We really haven't. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. I actually see some people not being able to commit um, which I think is good, you know, you kind of got to weed through some of that stuff too. But, and again, we're talking on our team, but it, this goes for everyone that I'm, that I'm hearing and talking to yep. too. Cause I was talking to their agent. He's just solo agent at our brokerage. But, um, you know, I had kind of asked him and he, he had to think about it. Like, I don't know if I ever really sat down in the last year and intentionally, Made calls, made outbound prospecting calls or, or, you know, did anything like that. The other thing I like that John said too, which was good, I think impactful is having an email that goes out to your lead database once a week Uh on something. It can be like the shiny penny house, like one cool house that you, you saw that got listed that you think is like a really good opportunity that you send out to everyone, even if it's not in their criteria. Yeah. Um, it could just be like a market update, can give a interest update of what's going on, maybe talking about the Fed meeting here, how that, how you think that might affect it. Just something to stay in front of them, yeah, I absolutely. think is impactful too. Oh, but just staying top of mind with your clients. Yeah. That's really what it is. It's just top of mind. So I think that stuck out. And I really, I think it's, it's smart to really think of a trend, like let's just say a, a, a real estate transaction or a client buys a property or sells a property. It starts there, but you got to work backwards. It's meeting them face to face, right? Like, and then it's showing them properties and then it's having appointments. So the conversation is the first piece. The first piece is a conversation and then it leads to an appointment face to face. And then it means it leads to showing properties or getting the property listed, right? Showcase ready. And then it's selling that house or finding them a house. 
So it's all about working backwards. So I'm excited in the direction that we're going in because it's it's going to be easier to keep an eye on, okay, who are the agents on the team that are putting in the work? We can see it. We don't have to call them and be like, hey, Timmy, did you do this today? Nope. Okay. Hey, Tabby, did you do this today? Yep. Okay. Now I know. Yeah. Like, it'll be easier to see visually. Yeah. And on that too, um, the, what do we call it? The nine month backward slide. Yeah. Yep. So we have a thing that we see in our, on, on our team too. And we've had this for the four years I've been here. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had it before I got here. Yeah. We just didn't track it like yep. we do now is, um, so maybe it takes them two, three months to start getting some sales. Yep. And then some of them see like really good success. And then they have like six months of like really good success. And they get a little burnt. Then they get burnt out. Or they take their first check and they go on vacation. That they, they feel like they forgot what they did. Yep. They forgot about the activities. To get to where they were. And then they start getting busy. And then they're just processing their current files or current clients. Because it's new to them. They're like, oh man, I've never had three clients before. So this is a lot. So they, yeah. they have to go get client gifts and they got to go meet with contractors and they got to meet with the photographer. And it's a lot. The fun fluff stuff that totally. is fun, but it's not paying your future bills. Exactly. Not the future bills, the current bills. I mean, I just had, not to stop you, but I had an agent who joined our team two weeks ago, maybe three at the most. They got their first sale on Sunday. Yeah. Okay, which is great. But you know what they said? That was easy. That's the worst thing in the world because when an agent says that's easy, that's not good. Yeah. Because that's not how it works. You don't normally meet someone on a Saturday, they buy on a Sunday. Yeah. Okay. And we're talking like this is the second call this person has ever received. That's a scary thing. So that's also part of the backward slide is it's they have a lot of attention on us. You're meeting with them. I'm meeting with them. Adrian's meeting with them. Janelle's meeting with them. They're coming to all of our meetings because we have a ton of meetings the first four or five months. And then our meetings kind of drop off because we want them to be busy and not come into the office and we feel like four to five months is like release them into the wild let them go yeah we don't want to hold hand hold them yeah as much. totally Be for yeah. them not exactly which we might need to start doing so then what we might do is we might bring a, a ship back out <laughs> or we might have to bring a ship back out and save them a little bit because they're drowning out there yeah right essentially um but the backward slide is definitely like you said they forgot about the habits they cash some of their checks they get overwhelmed they get busy and then they just go back to Oh, shoot. I mean, we've had some agents that are like, well, I'm going to change my price by I'm only working high end. I'm only going to work this neighborhood. I'm only going to. And they start to forget like three, four months ago, they drove an hour and a half to show houses. And now they don't even want to drive 10 minutes. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. They start getting real selective. Uh huh. Yeah. Backwards slide. That's a real, real thing. Yep. And we've got some trainings in mind. Nothing's concrete set up, but we have some targeted trainings that we want to start trying with the agents. Yeah, but none of it's like crazy. It's just like simple stuff that we're going to just- Rejection, how to get better at listings, prospecting, looking at like owning the day in the first three hours, right? Like John's schedule. Um, you know, some of those things like for sale by owners or expired listings or some of those more difficult things to get them outside of their element because they just need to get some sales and now they have some sales so they're not desperate. Now they have a little more time. Yeah. So how do we get them to do their- 52-minute <laughs> conversations a week. Right now, our average for the team, with the agents that are doing it, because there's a lot of people that aren't, but the agents that are doing it right now are just under four. Yeah. That's where we're at. Per agent. Yep, four per agent. Yeah, and that's yep. crazy to think about. Yep, and those are the people that are actually making calls out of there. And, like, again, we, ha we have a lot of agents marking call, like, call, call, call. So it's not like... It's not like it's not happening. It's just not being called. But on the agents that are calling out of the CRM, it's right now four. Well, and it's skewed too, like you said too, because let's take, you know, like one of the agents I met with, she's at like 45 homes for the year, which yes. is incredible. Yes. It's her what, first year or uh -huh. second year? No, it's her first year in November. First year in November. So like just having an incredible year and like she doesn't use any of it, so, you know, so she's not tracking any yeah. of it. So the, those numbers are skewed. And, you know, I do believe she's having multiple totally. conversations in but a day. Let's be honest. If I brought on seven or eight more agents, you'd, some of those leads might be spread out a little bit. Oh, I know. You know? Yeah. So we definitely don't want to set them up for too much. And sometimes that happens. We look at conversion numbers and we want to give more agents more, say, Google leads, Zillow leads, Realtor.com, doesn't matter. But if we want to give them more leads, well, you know what happens when you get more leads? They prospect less. Yeah. Develop bad habits. So it's that fine line. You want to get the right lead to the right agent, 
and not waste it on people that are squandering it. But then you're also developing a bad habit. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the downfall to Zillow Flex, for example, is, I mean, it's it's great for our business as far as like numbers goes, but it does, it creates a lot of bad habits when you just, it's that, I mean, you can afford to have less conversations and yes. still sell a good amount of homes. Yep. I can think of four agents right now that are 90, 95% of their business is Zillow Flex. And we're talking five to $6 million. Just so you know, that's probably, you know, 20, 25 houses. Yeah. Which is scary. But again, it's somewhere for them to start. And this these agents had no sales before. So again, it's like good and bad, but you want to give them the leads. Yeah. Because they convert it so well. I, I would love to get everyone to like a 25% Zillow. Absolutely. Like they take 25% of their business is Zillow. Yep. And the 25% but, is another lead source maybe we give them. Yeah. 25% is maybe listing slash they're prospecting 25% They're, they're referral. prospecting. Yeah. And then you can take our leads and get absolutely. referrals from them. Yep. I mean, that's the that's probably one of the bigger underutilized lead gen tools on our team yep. is that right there. Absolutely. Because the statistic that Zillow gives me all the time is on average, you're getting 2.1, 2.3 referrals per lead. Over the course, the lifetime of that lead? No, I think they have the statistic in the in a five year period. Okay, so um, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know um, that's how long some of the data numbers that they've tracked. I think it's right around five years, two people, like I said, two point something, and two referrals. I mean that's pretty good. And then also like let's just say the average client comes back to you in five or six years. Also, that's another two sales. Yep. Right. But I would imagine a lot of people that we meet with probably have you know, brothers or sisters or cousins or grandparents or friends that we're not getting introduced to. Yeah, hundred percent. So I feel like we're gonna do a, we're gonna try to do a better job of talking about referrals, maybe, you know, uh pop buys. Because Amanda does a great job on our team. Something so simple is she goes to Crumble Cookie. Mm-hmm. She buys a hundred individual boxes, which you know, I don't that don't cost that much, a couple bucks. She buys a hundred individual packages, and then once a week she buys four cookies or six cookies, and she puts them in individual boxes, and writes a card, and then knocks on the door. So Great. She, and she's spending, you know what, five bucks yep. maybe, a handwritten note, a card, and the cookie, and she's gotten uh, a sale or two a month from that. From you know, she's probably spending uh, three hundred dollars maybe a month on cookies, mm -hmm. and I'm shooting high. Yeah. So that's what Amanda has broken down and I think we thought about it, is like, let's say the average lead you get from an internet, we won't say Zillow, we'll say any internet lead is about a thousand bucks. Take that thousand dollars and spread it out over 12 months, right? And that's how you can get more referrals. And Amanda's doing it with a $5 cookie. Yeah. So she's not spending a thousand dollars on a client, she's spending maybe $200, yeah. right? Because she's got other things that are more expensive too. But Yeah, well, and on that too, I remember I did, this was, I went and bought like, 200 five dollar starbucks gift oh, cards you know sure. send them out and i didn't put in the letter give me a referral all i said was hey i hope you enjoy a pink cake, cake pop on me yeah or my favorite a pink cake pop and cake pops are about five bucks now so that's about right yeah well they, <laughs> yeah and um it i i mean the last time i had done that like i probably got like five or six referrals come off of that yeah it's just super simple just a touch you don't have to overthink it i feel yeah. like that's what we do as realtors as a team and John does that all the time. He reminds us that we need to just cut it out. And like, it was so funny because even like with Janelle, we was talking to Janelle, he was like, he was asking her questions and you could tell she was overthinking. He's like, it's just conversation. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the number one thing you're missing? And she's like, uh, open houses, door knock. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just conversation, just talk to people, just yeah. talk to them. And I think the number one thing we're missing on referrals is just a pop by a $5 gift card. Why do you think that simple? is? Do you think it's just because agents see what other people do like at all these different levels? And then you got like Ryan Sirhan yeah. and you have Selling Sunset and you see all the shit that everyone else does. I mean, you think it's that? Is it just like a typical mindset of a 80, like typical agents have ADD? Is it like, well, I don't know, like what, why is, I mean, I'm guilty of it. No, I we all, all are. The time. Well, I think it, and something to think about too is like, if, if someone wrote you a handwritten card, let's just say for your birthday, 
you probably keep that for even a week, two weeks, a month on your desk. So imagine if you wrote a handwritten card and mailed it to somebody. They probably would keep it. Yeah. How many people get a handwritten card? But it's probably a combination, Adam, of when when you have to sit down and think about it. In real estate, we're very reactive. So instead of planning out like, hey, I have 50 past clients. Where do they live? Okay, I need like to get treating their- it like a business. Exactly. Where where do they live? Okay, I need their addresses. Okay, then what am I going to do? Well, I don't know. Well, no, where am I going to? What? How much am I going to spend? Well, what am I going to buy? And I think again, it's just it's planning. Mm-hmm. It's probably planning. Yeah. Because we're very reactive. Very reactive. You need to treat it like a business. Business plan. Yeah. Stick to your plan, but keep it simple. Simple. The things that I'm working on, this, this has nothing to do with prospecting, by the way, so I'm going to sidetrack us a little bit, is something that I'm working on is, and it's actually through a pastor buddy of mine, and it's words to live by. Okay. So think of it as like, you know, we talk a lot about like, what's their why? Like, why are you doing this? Like going deep on that. And then they, we need to be reminded of why we are doing what we're doing because you get a lot of rejection. Yep. But you can also make a lot of money. Yep. So what are you going to do with that money? Now your average agent, I think what is your average agent makes 30,000 a year? Yeah. Something like that. If you're talking- 70% of the real estate market in Omaha- Sells two or less houses a year, seventy percent. So you're you're way under thirty. Uh huh. You're you're maybe fifteen. Yep. If you're if you're talking the average sales took, price. Yeah. If you took the average, you would you would probably be thirty five to forty. But if you looked at just let's just that's because a lot of the higher end offset that. Yeah. So yeah, you're probably looking fifteen twenty G's probably. Seventy percent of the real estate community earns today. Yeah. So, but like. So this words to live by thing, I'm working on it right now. I'm literally spending a couple hours each day working on this. Like, what are my words to live by? And I, I almost like compare it a little bit like to affirmations a little bit. And I remember back in the day when I was first starting, like I, I was into affirmations a little bit. It's kind of like a Mike Ferry thing. Like yep. do these affirmations. I always thought they were super cheesy, but like, I think they're, you know, I talk, I texted another buddy right before this and it's like, Hey, do you. I asked him if he did this. He goes every single morning from 6 a.m. to 6.15, he goes over his word to live by. 15 like, minutes a day. 15 minutes a day. He just, and like my pastor does it, and he has a three-page document with pictures in there and his words that he lives by. So think of it like kind of like affirmations yep. that he lives by. And it it sets the tone because your words, the dialogue that you have inside of you like your, your thoughts will, what leads you in your life essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think too, like to the prospecting point is like, we almost have to have, have these words to live by of who we are on a, on a, like who we are. But, uh, you know, I think it, it will give us like some sort of like, I don't want to say encouragement, but almost like direction, direction to be able to go and do the suck, do the, the story the boring mundane things like we have to do yep. to, to see the end results too. But also why are we doing it? Like, is it to pay off medical debt? Like we hear tons of stories on our totally. team, like all different, you yeah. know, whether it's medical debt, go on a family trip, buy a nice car or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, and, and it's usually something with their family. Yeah. It's almost yeah, always it's, with their family. Yeah, I would say 90% is with their family. Yeah. It's not just like a fancy sports car. You'd think it is, but it, we rarely hear Fancy cars. Yeah. It's rare. I'll go, we'll go deeper on the words to live by once I get mine done. And I, yeah. because I, I do think That'd it would help a lot of people really, because I think we get so busy and that's also the bad thing is we have these phones and it's like, it's, it's like a curse for us. It's it a, is. it's a blessing, but it's a curse at the same time. Because we're always connected, but we're not connected. Yeah. And it's just like the, what is that whole dope? It's this dopamine dump of. And, and it drains us in all these other ways too. But I think it's, that is part of why we probably overthink so much is because we get so much thrown at us. Like my mom would always say this too. She goes, I don't know how the heck you guys do it in your generation because you guys are always so attached. There's no shutting down. And so we get distracted of why we're here, what we're doing, our purpose, and you know our words to live by, mm-hmm. which then would affect you on on your daily task of you're running in circles. You're in this, you're in this negative vacuum of like, 
um, just you're you're in this vacuum of repeating the same bad habits yeah. on a daily basis too. So I think really figuring out like what are your words to live by and what are what's your why to help you do the boring mundane things on a daily thing. But like that's the, I think that's the other cool thing about sales is everything could get cookbooked backwards. Yes. What do you want to make or what do you want to do with your money? What are you yep. going to do? Pay off debt, go on a family vacation, um, whatever. So what is that money? Let's say it's $80,000. Yeah. And then, and then you cookbook it backwards. Like how many sales does that mean I have to make? Okay. For every sales, how many contracts do I have to make? How many appointments to get those contracts? How many Convers phone calls, conversations do I have to yep. get those appointments? And then how many dials do I have to make to, to get, get the to have those conversations? Yep. I mean, you can literally get back to the ridiculous yeah. Just daily simple. mundane thing. But I think we all get too distracted of of that. Yeah. And I'm guilty of that too, big time, for sure. Um, so I'm actually rewiring myself or attempting to to go back to simplifying it. And so think of like you and I, like we have, you know, we have a mortgage company, we have an insurance company, we have a title company, like all these ancillary right things off. where same concept yep. going around with their head cut off and then certain things will sometimes suffer if we're not spending some amount of time absolutely working on building those things totally. same thing goes with prospecting. you don't just set it and forget it yeah totally you don't just leave it behind so i think it's also to like figuring out like your deep why and the funny thing is too is like there's a ton of awesome resources out on that stuff and like i've even like used chat gpt a little bit like hey here's me here's what i think i'm about can you help me get down to who <laughs> i am and it does help it's it, it has helped but i think it helps give clarity of like the mundane thing you gotta do totally well it's like you said it's the direction for where you live and like Again, if you're looking at, and there's a statistic out there, if you're looking at news when you first wake up, your day is dramatically worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you're just looking at any news, it doesn't Instagram, matter. Instagram, so Facebook, Absolutely. any of it. Yeah. Just anything like that, you're dramatically, your level of happiness dramatically increases or goes down, excuse me, because of the first thing you look at in the morning. So there is something to it about the mantra, the affirmations. Um, and there's definitely something to it. You know, I actually was... I've been listening to a ton, which I think I sent you um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago. I've been listening to a lot of uh, founders or yeah. uh, business owners yeah. of like how they started their business. Those are good. Yeah. Um, and the one I just listened to was uh, Five Guys Burgers and Fries. Really? Yeah. And uh, he's in his 70s now. And if you ask him why he did it, he, it's never about money. He's like, he goes, when I was at my business, he was a financial advisor. He said he was a financial advisor and he had four sons. And- uh, the uh, lawyer said, you have to incorporate. So he incorporated. He just said, yeah, it's called Five Guys, and we'll just rename it when it comes out. And it was just four of his sons and him. And uh, he said, I think I want to start a burger place. And everyone told him, no way, that's no, that's crazy. Like, who would ever just burgers and fries? That's it, just the two things. Everyone thought he was crazy. And, uh, he, you know, he actually, just until um, probably 12, 15 years ago, he only had two to three locations and he kept it small and he and they asked him they said why did you do it and he said i just wanted some, something fun to do yeah he didn't care about money he didn't care about uh certain things that he had to pay off or jet skis or i mean he's a multi-millionaire and he said i live my life the exact same way that i do now and my why was the only reason i did it is because i wanted a place for my kids to work it's the only reason he started the business that's awesome so just he kept it super simple and uh, a lot of those that i listened to a lot of those founders or business leaders that you think of, these massive, massive behemoths, they all started with the simplest concept. It was never money. Yeah, well, think of five guys. Like, what a simple concept. It's literally burgers and fries. That's it. And, and they, they just added I think they have chicks. a hot dog. Yeah, and they just, that's recent because they never did that. He wanted two menu items. That was it. Yeah. And he, a, it, was, it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, just listening to it's him. A good, it's a good burger, too. And it is. Yeah. So, and he even, he even joked about like, Hey, there's long lines. People don't want to wait. Like, and he charges four to five times the price of McDonald's four to five times the yeah. price. And the wait is 20 to 25 minutes. Whereas you go to McDonald's, I don't know, was it two minutes? Yeah. So, um, anyway, I guess long story short about you're talking about your why I feel like that's something that as society, we have to get better at of like why we're here. And if, if you look at the rain, the main reason you're here is to create life memories 
is to connect with other people. And there's science around people die sooner if we're by ourselves and we're not connected to friends, family, or have a purpose. Community. A community around Yeah. So I feel like as a team, we're going to continue to build up our tribe, our unit, our community of prospecting. And this is going to help benefit our realtors. It's not just, hey, here's a ton of leads. Here's how you sell them. Yeah. Good luck. Right? Like we're going to help Which them. Which there is a little bit of like um, learning skill in that too, by the well, way. Well, yeah, that's not easy. Trust me. There's plenty of reasons why people think internet leads suck. Yeah. I can tell you a million reasons why. We just had an agent join last week. Um, he made a thousand calls <laughs> in six days. And uh, he told me internet leads suck. Yeah. He's like, they're terrible. He met with two clients this weekend and he almost wrote his first offer. Yeah. But the internet leads suck. Yeah. So trust me, there is something to it. Yeah. Um, but my Well, point, I mean, the skill you build by doing that too. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think it's just overall, we want our team to be as the market shifts or as it changes. Again, our business is up year over year. We could sit back and relax, but I feel like we'd set ourselves up for failure. We really would. Like if we just sat back, because again, if we sat back, we would be severely behind. Yeah. And you always want to be playing against yourself. So yeah. I don't care what the market's doing. I want to, like you said, I want to try to get better at what we're doing. Who cares what's going on outside? Yeah. I think the other thing too that I'll end with is um, Ed Millette said this, I believe. And it was basically like every time you break a promise with yourself, like every time, and this, this, it's all goes back to prospecting, but it's about life too. Like every time you set your alarm for six or seven to go do a workout and then you don't do it and you hit snooze or every time you say you're going to call and you're like, I'm going to have 10 two minute conversations today. Yep. And every time you don't do it, every time you say you're going to make a Facebook post about whatever concerning real estate or business and you don't do it, like all these times you say you're going to do something and you don't do it. It's like, that's one of the biggest, um, confidence, decreasers uh -huh. like you're breaking a promise with yourself every single time and it just keeps taking you down and down to where you feel like well, man what is my work so imagine if we all said what we said we do what we say we're gonna do that's why keeping it simple yep. is really effective and we stuck with it and then that just starts compounding so that's what i like the stair step approach on okay 10 Two minute conversations, yep. and then get to fifteen, or then yeah. get to twenty, because we're just we keep just building that. Well, and John it. talked about small wins. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like you're already like you just said. Well, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not making my calls. I'm not doing my all, and it's just like it's just a beat down. Yeah, and they're just defeated. Yeah, give them small wins. Yeah, and Dave Ramsey talks about all the time with money. It's small wins. Pay off the smallest credit card and watch how much you can save in bills in the future by paying off the littlest ones. Yeah. It's all compound. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, hopefully that was effective. Yeah. Prospecting. Uh, um, no, no, no. I'm not prospecting. Two-minute conversations. How many two-minute yeah. conversations are you having in a week's period? Are you front-loading it, getting it all done right away? Yep. Are you waiting until last, last minute, minute, which is what most people do? Yep. That's why the mid-check-in is huge. Yeah. Oh, that's our yep. thing. Yeah, mid-check-in. And that's why prospecting, like I was going to say, is prospecting isn't checking in with my clients. Prospecting isn't sending an email. Prospecting isn't just no work. It's, it, yeah, it's it's calling out of the pond leads. Yep. It's calling for buyers. It's calling expired. It's calling your database fear of influence for referrals. Yep. It's reaching out to people that you're not talking to on a daily basis. Yep. It's really what it is. It's so, so simple. We overcomplicate it. I know. It. <laughs> why? Like the podcast. Yeah, why? It's simple. Yeah, why? I don't know. <laughs> At any rate. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Hope everybody.